I know most people haven't used one of these in years, but have you ever stopped to think of what a brilliant piece of engineering the 3.5 inch floppy disk is? It was introduced by Sony in 1982 and it remained in common use for at least two decades beyond that. And even today its unmistakable shape lives on as the universal icon for saving a document. The first floppy disks were introduced in the early 1970s and were 8 inches, but they were not commonly used with personal computers due to their high cost and bulky size. And then when the 5 and a quarter inch floppy disk was introduced, they called it the mini floppy disk. So the next logical step for the 3.5 inch disk was to call it the micro floppy disk, or some brands just called it a micro disk. But the big blue giant of computing, IBM, referred to them as diskettes. So the majority of the industry followed IBM's lead and used that terminology as well. But in everyday language, most people call them floppy disks. So you'll see the two terms used interchangeably. And if you ever wondered how to say double density diskettes in French, it's double density diskettes. Yeah, thanks for that 3M. And back in the 80s and 90s, some people mistakenly referred to these as hard disks because they might have heard the term hard disk, but they probably didn't really know what it meant. So they figured if this is a floppy disk, then this must be a hard disk. And when three and a half inch diskettes were introduced, they were really a godsend for novice users because they solved a lot of problems that people had with five and a quarter inch floppy disks. Even something as simple as how to remove the disk from its protective envelope. And the instructions in the book said, take a diskette from its protective envelope. Now the protective envelope stayed in the box as it often does. And all he had in his hands was this, and he read the paragraph again. Remove the diskette from its protective envelope. So he did. Now he didn't do it quite as dramatically as that. You're going to see it on the videotape. But it is an. Ex I went to Poughkeepsie with his story, and they said, "Oh yeah, you know, we've been people have been tearing these things up for years, <laughs> years." or putting the floppy disk in the drive. There's eight possible ways to put one of these in a drive, but only one of them is gonna work. There's nothing to stop you from putting it in backwards or putting it in sideways. Whereas with a three and a half inch disk, you can try putting it in upside down and backwards, but it only goes in part way. You can try putting it in sideways. It doesn't even fit upside down. That way doesn't fit. Backwards like that doesn't fit. The only way that works is the way that works. That's because this little angled off corner and these notches in the back aren't just there for decoration. They are what ensures that you can only put it in the drive the correct way. And to help you not make that mistake of putting in the disc the wrong way, it even has this helpful little arrow indicating the proper orientation. Three and a half inch diskettes also did away with the need to close a latch or door when inserting the disc. You just pop in the disc and it automatically locks into place and when you want to remove it again you don't need to open the latch and pull it out you just push a button and it pops out and if you were lucky enough to own a Macintosh you had automatic eject and with five and a quarter inch floppy disks people would get their greasy fingers on the open area here and their data would be ruined they would crease the disk and their data was ruined. They would staple it to a piece of paper and their data was ruined. In fact, even just pressing too hard when writing on the label with a ballpoint pen or pencil or attaching a paper clip can damage a five and a quarter inch diskette. The hard plastic shell and protective shutter makes the three and a half inch diskette impervious to that kind of damage. Although the very early 3.5 inch diskettes did not have an automatic shutter, you had to slide it open and closed manually. This is a slightly later one which can work in either a manual shutter or automatic shutter drive. It says auto shutter and it's spring loaded just like later ones, but if you hold it open a little bit beyond its normal position, it stays open and then you notice it says pinch here. You pinch it and it snaps shut. And speaking of which, did you know that the first computer in North America to use the 3.5 inch diskette was not the Apple Macintosh. 
It was actually the HP 150 touchscreen computer in 1983. And until sometime in the late 1980s, most three and a half inch diskettes came in these clear plastic pockets. I guess these were supposed to help protect the discs, but most people would just take this off and throw it away. So what good is it? That's why they got rid of those. Another sign of cost cutting came about a decade later when many diskettes switched from using metal shutters to plastic shutters. They still work perfectly fine, they just feel a bit cheaper and lighter. Another advantage of 3.5 inch diskettes is when you want to write protect your data. With 5.25 inch discs, they came with this notch here which indicated it was okay to write on the disc. So when you wanted to write protect it, you had to use these stick on labels and cover up the notch. And sometimes these would get stuck and they would get ripped off inside the drive when you go to remove the disc. It would get caught in the mechanism. With three and a half inch diskettes, the right protect is a built-in sliding tab. You leave it up like this to enable writing to the disc, or you can slide it down to write protect the disc. And commercially pre-recorded software would often come without that sliding tab, so it was permanently write protected. This cutout on the other side of the disc also serves a purpose, and that is to automatically tell the drive which capacity of disc you have inserted. With a high density disc, it'll have this cutout here, while with a double density disc, it will not. Whereas with five and a quarter inch floppy disks, there is no way for the computer to tell the difference between a double density disc and a high density disc. It has to trust the user to make the correct choice. There were also 2.88 megabyte extended density 3.5 inch disks, but these were never widely used because they were very expensive, very few computers supported them, mostly just a few IBM PS2s, and by the time people needed this kind of capacity, they were moving on to things like zip disks and recordable CDs. But you can see once again, this has a special notch in a different position than a normal high density disk, so that way the computer can tell the difference between the two. And the final evolution of the 3.5 inch diskette, which most people never used, was the 120 megabyte super disk, also known as LS120. These were designed to be backwards compatible with standard 3.5 inch diskettes. So if you had a drive that supported these disks, it could also read regular 3.5 inch disks. You can see the physical form factor is basically identical, except the shutter design is a little bit more fancy. These use laser servo technology and they store 120 megabytes. They later came out with a 240 megabyte version, although those were not as popular. But you can see these carried over many of the same physical design features as normal three and a half inch diskettes, even including the sliding built-in write protect tab. But as much as I think 3.5 inch diskettes were a masterpiece of design and engineering, they do have some drawbacks. One is a rather silly one, and that is they could never seem to agree which way to put the label. Either with the label at the top, because that's the way 5 and a quarter inch discs always did it, and because it makes it easier to see the label when you're flipping through a box of discs. Or with the label at the bottom, because that's the way you put the disc into the drive. And a more serious problem is that if you got a little too rambunctious when removing one of these from the drive, it was not uncommon for it to rip off the metal shutter. The disc will still work fine, it'll just lose that physical protection of its surface. And it's not uncommon if you have a drive that gets jammed and won't let you put in the disc all the way to open it up and find one of these lodged inside. It is actually possible to reinstall one of these shutters, or one taken from a donor disc, although it takes a level of skill and patience that I don't have. But since this disc is already ruined, let's open it up and see what's inside. Not as easy as, as with a five and a quarter inch disc. Well, there you can see, there's the floppy disc inside, and it actually has this felt material to help keep the disc clean. So that's what's inside a three and a half inch diskette. So the next time you see a three and a half inch diskette, Hopefully you'll stop and take a moment to think about what a work of genius these things really are.